Okay, so I'm working in acrylics. I've got my paint all, all set out. Obviously, I'm not going to use all of this. Um, I use um, this acrylic uh, by Am it's Royal Talons and it's an Amsterdam range. And it comes in a student grade or an artist quality. So my yellows are artist quality. The white's artist quality, that's a titanium white. Um, there's maybe the sky blue, although I, I probably won't use a lot of that. Um, I'm working on canvas. I've laid down um, this kind of, it's kind of like, um, it was a dark green, but I just put white in it, something like sap green, um, put white in it, just so the base color, the green will contrast with the warm reds. And the other little thing, uh, what I will do is I put some tape around here so I can use part of the canvas as a little bit of a mixing tray so you can see the colors I'm using. Uh, this is the brush. Um, I tend to like flathead brushes. So um, yeah, so this is by De La Rowney. Uh, it's called the System 3 Skyflow brush, but basically uh, don't get a brush from B&Q because it flares out. So the good thing about these brushes is you get a nice refined edge and you've got the, you've got the width to load the paint up and kind of go straight in. So, so that's who I'm gonna, it's not my photo, but I just thought this would showcase kind of um, my way with acrylics. Uh, just so you know, if you've got any questions, my partner Marie will be in the chat room and she can kind of um, relay the questions to me um, if she can get a word in edgeways um, because I'll, I'll rabbit, rabbit on, no doubt. Uh, okay, so we'll dive in. So I want yellow ochre, some burnt sienna. Uh, this is cap, um, yellow medium. Some orange, bit of uh, magenta, bit of um, the ultramarine violet, maybe a tiny bit of blue. So quite a few colors. I could try it out. And once I try the color out, I just want to apply it maybe just in the corner there. So because I've overmixed it, it kind of zings a little bit. So we'll do that process again. So I've just damped my brush and I, I don't dilute paint uh, while I'm painting. Um, so just the moisture in, within the brush that I started with, will kind of see it through, hopefully. And we'll do a nice longer stroke over here. And again, so I'm not using any white, tiny bit of green this time, tiny bit of blue, put a color there. So all of a sudden I've got a bit of a swatch going. Like so. And we'll do the, the forehead. So, what will eventually happen, it will, it will go a bit dark uh, for the shaded side of the face. So there was a previous painting underneath this, so there might be a little bit of texture coming through. Break that color up and along. We can probably afford to make it go a bit darker now. So it's just some, that's primary magenta, maybe some darker violet, touch of green, touch of blue. And we'll just put that over there, like so. And over there. Gonna run that along here just so it goes a bit darker on this side. Like 
So obviously this stage is the fun part um, because I'm just enjoying kind of plastering paint and I'm, I'm not too worried about anything too technical. I mean, as I look at the photo, I'll, I'll just take on board. Um, so there's a slight angle to her face. So I'm aware of that, but I, I don't want to start doing little eyeballs. Uh, so it's pretty much, let's just block color in. Like so, so I've just added a bit more of the deep visor. So I've got this nice pool of color here that I could dip into. This would also tell me what colors I've used so far. And obviously I'm not cleaning my brush. So there's quite a bit of color embedded in my brush. Okay, so what I wanna do now is kind of roughly estimate where I think the eyes, it's not so much eyes, the eye sockets are gonna go. Just wanted a bit more blue coming from this. Um, so they're gonna go about there and just run them down over here. So all I'm doing is trying to position where I think the eyes will go. Um, and I can also do the same thing where I think the nose is gonna go. And I've deliberately just used a bit more blue and green to discover uh, those angles a little bit um, because I wanna utilize a stronger dark later. Uh, so a bit more. So obviously if it's in the wrong place, I'll have to adapt it um, as I start to put in more refined detail, but just at this stage, I'm just figuring out what to do. Bit of a shadow here. So obviously the good thing about acrylics, I mean, that's still kind of pliable if you like, um, but I can go in almost immediately to kind of block other things in, as long as I use, as long as there's always enough paint on my brush, Just trying to find that angle and maybe where the shadow is just below her bottom lip. That there, that there. So obviously I'm gonna use part of the background if you like, just to draw her uh, jawline in. There's a little patch there. Just gonna, that's gonna worry me, possibly. Okay, so back to this brush. I just wanna um, really at this stage get everything in. So there's a little bit of shadow. So again, I'm still not using white. The reason for that is I want the color to be a little bit more saturated at this stage. It's eventually I'm gonna put in tints and that's gonna draw the color away. So just at this stage, I'm looking to make sure um, the color is a little bit livelier. Okay, so that doubles up for the shading. Obviously some of the base color is coming through and I just wanna drop some color there as well. So if I don't use white, I can use some yellow ochre, maybe dip it into the yellow. So I use a lot of paint when I, when I initially go in. So some of these, to some extent, don't need too much more doing to them other than highlights. So I, I kind of save paint, if you like, without constantly layering. So if you're worried about quantities of paint in this kind of method, um, it's only because I'm not, um, I, I don't wanna prolong the, the painting process. So I'm trying to do as much as I can early on, which is why I go in and I'm, I'm trying to be quite 
um, broad, but confident with the, the strokes I'm using. Okay, so this shawl comes down to about there. And then the yellow is gonna take over. So uh, just continue that there and maybe that over here. Okay, so we'll get the yellow in. That's gonna be quite a light color, obviously. So just while I've got this color, I'm just gonna see if there's anything else probably I can do, probably not. Okay, so I'll go to a relatively clean brush. Just wanna get some clean yellow. And we'll run this. Okay, a bit of orange. So I've got quite dominant colors, obviously. So there's no burnt umber. Um, there's no ultramarine blue. Uh, they're all quite, you know, I've got things like phalo blue, cyan. I've even got Prussian, uh, Prussian blue. Um, so I've got uh, an armory of quite strong dominant colors. So she's got this interesting patterning going on. So we'll just indicate that roughly. So there's this light reddish color. I've just doused it in the yellow color. Touch more yellow ochre, I think, over here. So I used to do portraits um, the way you should do, which is, you know, grid everything and then uh, color it in methodically. Uh, I, I just found um, that just took quite a while. And I think this, this way I can block things in quite quickly, just so I got the bare bones of it. And then I can, to some extent, relay more information as I look at the photo about the drawing. And the drawing will then hopefully come through more at the end rather than at the beginning. Okay, so she's got a blue top on. So, I mean, I could force that into a blue, but instead what I'll do, I'll put the background in. So I just need to now start using, I mean, I love this color here. This is um, buff titanium. I'm not overly keen on buff titanium, but sometimes for demonstrations um, and the odd painting is quite handy. So all I'm gonna do is just mix that in with this color and I'll get a light tint, just put some blue in it, maybe a touch of green. Okay, so we can start off the process of, yeah, see it's just not overly interesting. So we'll get more color into it. And we'll just start blocking. That's the other thing, that for me is quite a small brush now. So. We'll go to this and we'll just smother it. With the light, there's some green actually just at the top there, sorry. Got this okay, there's a question. Uh, what is your approach to selecting the colors that you're using? Seeing some are guided by the process that others are using. Okay, so someone's asked, um, What's my is it? What's my guide for color? Oh, the colors that you're okay. So when I select the colors I'm using, yeah, I am kind of guided by the photo to a great extent. But uh, what I might do is I might saturate it a bit more because I I realize I'm copying from a photo, and the photo is um, isn't or should be treated as like the be all and end all. So I'm conscious, I want to uh, just lift the painting. Um, so if I use strong color, it's gonna stand out from afar. And also I know what's coming. So when I start using the tints, um, these colors are gonna 
slightly die a little bit. So I just want to make sure at the early stage, like I'm using a cream or I'm using a kind of browny kind of reddish color, but it's still, it's still going to be brown at the end. It's just the underlying heat of the red will just elevate the, hopefully will elevate the colors that are coming forth uh, a bit later on. I think what's tricky is, is um, if you're used to seeing portraits done in a more conventional method, I suppose, um, it's going to seem alien because you kind of think, well, if you've got the drawing, then you won't have to worry about that later on. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't want the drawing to be the guiding force to start with. I, I definitely want the color to sing. I just like color. So okay, so the blue's gonna go there. I'm just gonna save that. I have used a bit of white just to, to mix in there. Uh, in terms of the swatch, it does start off there and then it kind of maneuvers in and out of things uh, just so I've got a range of color which I can still to some extent dip into. Uh, although I need to introduce a blue. So it, it can get messy, obviously. Um, so we'll go, this is brilliant blue with some sky blue, maybe some of that. Just mix it in a little bit with um, what I've just used. And we'll just drag this color. Yeah, it just needs a touch more strength on that. In fact, yeah, this actually needs to come in a bit more. Like so. I'll also work on this background to give me a little bit of respite before I tackle the complicated um, features. Okay, well, I've got this blue. Just, she's got some gray hair, so. I'm kind of just keen to just dapple some of this blue in. It's just going to kind of nourish those gray tints, which are going to be coming in over there. And just, OK. So I'm going to go back to some of these light tints to start contouring the face. So I'm, I'm going to use white. I'm going to use my corrupted yellow. And I'm going to put a bit of sky blue in it because I don't want it just like a, um, a bright yellow. So I just want to soften it down a little bit. And we want to be quite uh, assertive about applying this maybe a touch more orange. Yeah, we'll just lighten up a little bit more. And it goes. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just create some of these they're actually fairly gentle graduations of light, but I'm quite keen to use a mark so I can actually see the mark I've applied. So what you might do in oils, for example, is blend it in, but I, I kind of stay away from that in my technique because I, I, I know that's probably the convention that, that you would normally use. It's just, I want it to be something a little bit more um, expressive. Okay, so that, yeah, her forehead slightly high over there. And this is gonna be a bit lighter. So as I introduce some red into my initial strong highlight, uh, it's just gonna create a couple of variations
So she's got this almost pained expression, probably from the sunlight. And she's frowning. Um, little bit of a thing going on there. Again, just to soften it off a bit more. So I'm just dabbing in and just looking to kill the red. Um, otherwise, it's just going to look too, too bright. So a touch of green in it, and it just dulls it. A little bit more. We'll just move down. So the, the best way of describing, I suppose, this process is um, I'm trying to kind of sculpt the sculpt the paint uh, just so it looks like I'm pounding it into submission into some kind of shape rather than like I say being too um, uh, careful with it so I am trying to make marks which are hopefully quite distinct okay so there's a strong light so I almost need to go back to something of the lighter tint. When I stopped doing realist, super, not super realist, but tighter stuff, um, I use portraits as a means to loosen up. So I do 50 minute to 45 minute portraits, just of whoever, just um, people I knew or photos I found but just do it in 45 minutes to 50 minutes. And I found that was quite a good discipline just to, because you're dealing with, to some extent, one big shape. Okay, so I like there. And okay, so there's gonna be a nice strong light there. So we're, we'll come to that just while I've got this color. So it might seem awkward using this brush to, to do little marks, but if you tilt it, um, you just get that refinement that you need, but without being fussy. Okay, so. Again, just little marks, and then hopefully something so it's something like that. So just shoot out the orange. So there's going to be a stronger highlight coming in there eventually. Let's get a little bit of green. Okay, and just, just working our way around. So gonna have this soft light there. And back to this bit of light here. Just gotta be careful. So that's not particularly inviting color. So either my brush needs changing or I just need to put some warmer color into it. And yeah, so this shadow, just gonna move it along. Yeah, slightly more orange. And yeah, so that's the dark's gonna just twist around. And there. Yeah. It's a strong light. Yeah, so slightly come down. That's gonna, I'll do that now. Quite a bit of um, improvisation here because, because I'm finding the drawing. 
So when I do a mark, I'm, I might be, I might want to change it straight away rather than leave it. But other stuff, or well, mostly I'm looking to move quite quickly around the painting so I don't get, there's not a log jam of uh, some things done and some things not done. Okay, so again, just picking up. Okay, so yeah, definitely need a bit of dark there. And obviously these are gonna go to a stronger light, a bit like that, even stronger than that actually. So we'll go back to some something like that. Touch more yellow in. And just... Just block that in there. And this light just kind of goes up. That's the other thing, when you use a big brush, you are also relying a little bit on the pressure. You are, so to start with, very matter of fact, and then as you start to build up, it, it's kind of skimming a little bit. And so she's got quite a protruding chin. which will indicate, just gotta be careful because adding white just does do that. There's not much of the variation. So we'll just run out a bit more color. Over here. Yeah, slightly more orange. And this is going to go light. So I can start to work my way in. Obviously, there's going to be there's going to be a bit of a line running in here. And I've just got to look at some of these measurements a little bit, especially around there. Just got to watch that a little bit. OK, so we'll light on this up. Uh, just where the ear is, and just maybe think about something in here. And it goes a bit lighter there. Yeah, we'll lighten that. We'll drift in a little bit of a reflective light there. Okay, so. Again, just trying to find certain positions. Once I find them, I'm, I'm trying to be confident about just boom, block it in. And over here. Yeah, just try to change the color up a little bit. Touch white, touch yellow. Okay, and yeah, so again, just looking to lighten it up. So I'm already thinking about kind of what's coming. Um, all my trump cards, the little refinements should go some way to start to create a slightly more finished looking portrait. I've got to adjust certain things that I might see a problematic. Um, okay. okay, so just while I've got this tint, just, yeah, so we're going to do something there. Maybe just drift some blue into it, into the warmth. Hopefully this blue will just give it a little soft bit of shade. It's kind of quite an awkward little color that 
fundamentally it's kind of going a gray, but I can lift it a little bit. So as I move towards the finish, I need to pop things. Okay, so for example, if I get some lemon yellow with some strong white, this kind of starts off the process of a very, very um, stark, uh, stronger light. I don't have to put it everywhere, but I just need to start off that process of really zinging it forward. And my lemon yellow, I, there's actually a touch more green. Um, so when I look at the photo, um, I'm kind of making assumptions. Uh, some of them, are, as long as they're close enough, I kind of think, yeah, fine, just go with it. Um, So this is then going to just go a bit darker. And because it's going to go a bit darker, I could probably get a, a brush I've used previously. So this has got a bit of blue in it. Maybe just add more blue. Or green. Just so I can find. And then it's going to go a bit red. So we'll pick up some red. And again, what we're looking to do is just essentially we're trying to create a, an edge to draw you from here going straight up. So I'll start and then I'll stop and then I'll start again and then drop the yellow. It's a bit of a yellowy red combo so we'll we'll kind of do that let's drop that within there we'll zing that forward so it's gone a bit corrupt but it should be okay so just over here touch of green So I always think that if I get to a particular stage and I've accomplished quite a bit, when it comes to adding the very kind of refined detail, um, I'm not gonna be as tired um, because the early stage or the first stage where I just block in has been hopefully quite painless. It's not always that way, but it, for this one, I, I kind of think, yeah, if I did spend more time, I can adjust the drawing. There's still um, th those little refinements. I'll be I'll be getting a little rigor brush out for that soon. For the eyelashes, of course, I'm not. I had my eyes tested recently and they've got worse, so I can see even less, which is obviously ideal for this kind of technique. She's actually got this sparkly uh, earring and this kind of color. And then it goes a, a bit pinky over here. And here comes up. So we can lighten the background, but I'm going to leave that because uh, I want to go in with some strong highlights. And so this is probably the smallest brush. It's a one inch, one inch or three quarter inch, one of those. Um, just move that over slightly. So I need to really pop these highlights, so um, white, lemon yellow, bit of the blue. So this is gonna be a bit stronger than what I started with. 
few minutes ago. Touch more in the way of yellow. So really conscious, I want to hold the brush in a slightly clumsier way. So as I just drag the brush around, it's loaded. And it's just so when I make the mark, it's not so self-conscious. Okay, I'm just going to meld a couple of these things together. Okay, and just okay, I'm just going to be careful. Okay, and just strengthen up. So I've got a soft tint. This is a lot stronger. Just portrays the heat on her forehead a little bit more. And yeah, so there's, it's so tempting. I can see all the wrinkles. My Obsessive brain is say, yeah, put them all in. I'll put one in. And again, just want to vary. So touch of orange this time. And the eyelid just kind of kind of just scoots down. Okay, so there's a nice little highlight. There. Okay, so I didn't put the highlight in earlier, so we're going to do that now. Just a couple of little edges there. There's actually a slightly subtler shade, just kind of breaking into where the eyes are. Obviously, I can see a little bit of the eyes. Speed up. That's what happens when you promise two. You got to do things quicker. Okay, just a little bit of. I'm gonna squeeze out a bit of yellow there, and it kind of graduates in. Okay, I'm just gonna be careful about. Yeah, I'm gonna put a strong dark in there soon. So it's a case of putting in strong lights and strong darks contrast it. Stronger light here. I quite like leaving the eyes as they are here. Um, partly because sometimes when you don't see the eyes and you just see the eye sockets, it's just a bit more mystery, but we'll see how the time goes. Okay, so just little dabs there. So, okay, loaded brush. Okay, and the nose, it kind of graduates a little bit. I haven't really paid attention to the contouring. So I really like the beginning bit. This is where you have to really knuckle down. I have got <laughs> a lot of things at the moment and just trying to fit everything in. This is when you're really pleased you can paint quick. Slightly, yeah, 
So you might do that. It's only because the color, it's not my fault. The color went muddy. Yeah, because I'm using green and orange. That's, that'll do it. Okay, so a bit of light there. Okay, so they're just little dabs here and there. Um, I'm going to work my way down. Right, so this highlight is quite strong. And it just comes around. Just a little glint on the top lip. And there's a, she's almost smiling. So there's a little thing there. And there's a nice little light just, just drawing the lip up. There's a nice strong highlight there. So if you imagine lots of this, and then you have to pinpoint that, and that takes, uh, that's obviously where you've got to have good eyesight. I'm just guessing, I go ping. Okay, just drag that down, just goes a bit lighter there. And yeah, just that bottom lip. So, Normally when I do paintings, there's a stage at the end. Normally I wait till the next day to just enhance the highlight that little bit more, uh, just to give it a little extra lift. Okay, so we'll just, it's nearly done. It's nearly, nearly overworked it. Um, okay, so that, Just, okay, so I, I particularly like Van Gogh portraits um, or they, they kind of, they look, vaguely look like a person and, um, but there's a bit of a stylized thing going on. So um, that's my, my preference, it's my excuse. Just light on this. Okay, so just want to draw the jawline out a little bit. And then it scoops up. Probably do another five minutes on this and then it, I'll call it quits. And then, yeah, so that goes up there. Again, just looking at these bits. So there's, there's subtle things that happen. So where the yellow starts to merge into the green, out to the shadow, I might put some green there. Um, there's some of this, yeah, some of the gray hair, Let, let's start thinking about those finishing things, just about that. If I keep telling myself that, I'll, I'll convince myself. Um, okay, so that there. Yeah, so this is where big marks at the beginning are quite helpful because at the end, when you start doing these little things, you get a nice contrast between a big bold mark against little things. Just in here.
Okay, so this, if you miss any of this, there's a book called Painting, Portraits and Acrylics. That's where I got all my information from. So available on Amazon. Okay, so again, just, just little zings of bits of light. So that blue is fortuitous that I can now put a gray on it. And the blue contrasts the red and just creates a nice bed for the gray to sit on. Okay, so just rattling to the end, uh, a couple of little things. Where's the time going? Uh, okay, so a bit of slightly lighter color just to soften off. And yeah, I promise that bit of pink. Just really quickly. By the way, I am running a workshop. We are, I, I think, just about full at West Wickham on the 2nd of October. Um, I think we're just about full, but we are running probably going to run another one next year. So if you're interested in wacky acrylic paintings, um, you know where to come. So if you email me, Marie will put something in the chat room with my website address, hashimaki.co.uk, and you'll go through this interview process just to see mentally if you're, if you're up for it. I'm joking. And uh, yeah, and you can start painting with big brushes. All right, a couple of little things there. A couple of the pinks, just so they contrast each other. Probably won't do much more in the eyes. Um, but okay, white, lemon yellow again. So at the end, just to tighten the edge. A load of bikers going down. They're going to the seafront. Okay. So. Sorry, just bear with me. I'm just trying to create more work for myself. Nearly done. Yeah, so those lights, I, I just wanted something to strengthen the outline around her. So hence, just wanted some other light source Just melding through. And just a couple of lighter bits to add to her top. So I've got the, the kind of strong blue I started with, and then I can just drag something over it. And just, just wanted to accentuate the jawline. Yeah, I did want to maybe use some dark, but that's not going to happen for this one. So I think that's. Just add 
a little bit more. So I use this tape. So as I take the tape off, it just gives a uh, slightly thinner edge. Yeah, so um, I was thinking maybe put some darks in, maybe I'll do that just before we start the next one, but just as a first for here into portraits with acrylics. Right, so I'm using, uh, this is ultramarine violet with white. Um, I've just um, topped up my yellows. I've used a palette knife just to skim some corrupt color away. And again, I'll, I'll use this side as a bit, bit of a swatch. I'm either gonna use white or buff titanium. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use a bit of both. I can't decide, so uh, we'll use both. Um, some yellow, yellow ochre, bit of orange, quite a bit. Of, this is um, light green, something like that. Just mix those colors in. Probably need to do a little, little bit more mixing here. Um, so I want that little shimmer of green coming through with some of the reds and yellows. Some light blue as well. Okay, and again, we probably want to go in quite strong. So I don't want the white coming out too much. Definitely have a kind of green vibe coming from this um, uh, features a bit. So we'll just, again, it's more an underlying color. Okay, and we'll just block that in. A little bit more in the way of the blue coming through, just so it lightens it up. And we'll just run that down. So obviously what's gonna happen, this is all gonna be smothered eventually with, with a stronger light. It's just at the beginning, just want that slightly more. Interesting colors coming kind of through. Okay, so her ear is gonna be about there. There's this, nice shade coming from the cheekbones. So definitely gonna think about that very soon. And also where the hair is, so I'm gonna do that next. Um, so I just want some burnt sienna with some violet, deep violet, ultramarine. And again, we'll, we'll keep that green running through it, some yellow ochre. Bit more in the way of yellow. So I've not done this lady's face before, so it's, it's, um, that's always good fun. No prep, just dive in. Just a 
touch of orange. Again, just keeping an eye on the time. So whatever I paint, um, I, I definitely have my own priorities, if you like, um, which are, yeah, I, I definitely want to enjoy it. I want to en engage with it. Um, so every painting has the same, I suppose, mental outlook. Okay, so there's this nice shadow. And this color will also come through in the background a little bit. Again, so phthalo green, burnt sienna, some orange. Obviously the light color underneath will seep through. Definitely got to find out where the eyes are going to go. So we're going to consider that next. Yeah, just, it's kind of, if you make it look odd to start with, then it can only get better. Okay, and we've got the nose, again, very subtle, almost have to drain the color a little bit. This comes in. Get that green going. And so the lips are going to be here, but I'm just going to locate them first and I'm going to use a red. Or then they're, they're kind of quite a, yeah, they, they are red, it's sort of warm, light red. Just want to put that in first. Okay, so the background is a similar kind of color, but a touch more green. Green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, some orange. Okay, well, I've got this color. I'm gonna try and just generate the eyes a little bit better. So I'm using the same brush. There's a lot more phthalo green in it. I really like the, the combination of phthalo green and orange. So uh, just push the orange out a little bit more. This one's a bit darker on this side.
yeah, not overly keen on using a line to guide me because it's one definitive edge. But in this case, I'm going to just bring this shade in. So let's say these eyes are far apart or something like that. I can just bring that edge in if I want to. I've got to darken around it. Then I can look at that space and think, you know, well, let's drift a little bit more shade over it. And at some point, I'll, I'll kind of get closer and closer. Obviously, I'm, I need to indicate things like where her nose is. I'm trying to look at it and measure it just without doing the holding the brush. So again, I'm just tentatively positioning things. So I know if I look at the photo, that kind of lines up roughly there. Uh, but again, there's still a lot more room for the drawing of it if I want to. And over here. Yeah, so again, even the hair behind, I can start to speculate a little bit more about how much does that come in? And then lock it down and again, just get a little bit more, maybe a bit of deep violet this time. And just So I've got this patch of color that I can mix into each other just to either soften or darken. Just looking at the time as well. Okay, so definitely want to darken the hair. So right, this I've got Prussian blue, and there's a this is greenish blue. But it's like a dark, very dark um, blue, <laughs> greenish blue. But I, I definitely want to shoot up the tone. So this should just energize some of those darks. Again, the big brush, if it's loaded, you can just skim it and you get something. And it sometimes runs into the paint that you've already got. And again, I'm gonna use her hair to kind of carve in. So it, it's already going into a almost limited palette now. Uh, but underlying all of that is hopefully some interesting colors. One of the art galleries who um, shows my work had said to me once, can you use more mocha colors, more kind of neutrals because they they go better in people's houses but you, you just don't kind of learn from them as much so I don't mind doing the odd one but I definitely like the addition of some strong color or something even at the start if I feel like I'm exploring some color okay just coming in this side We'll get some magenta, I feel like just warming up this side a little bit more. 
So obviously it's got to work through all the darks. Eventually some of it will come through, yeah. Okay, so I, I kind of want that, but with a smaller brush. So I'm just going down a brush size. And we'll go to that dark again. So it's basically deep violet, some phthalo green. Just want some of that red in it. Yeah, so it's a bit of maneuvering. And then just doing a, so that brush just, not my fault, it just went up like that. And we'll, so I want that to go to a slightly more reddish shade. We'll maybe do something with this eyebrow. Yeah, I feel I've elongated her face a bit more, so I might bring, um, so I've aged her a couple of years. It's very tricky when you're doing young women like this or young men, um, youthful looking, because geometrically they're kind of more in line so if you get one eye off, it, it kind of shows a bit more burnt sienna. And again, we'll just run a bit of tone. Quite distinctive eyebrows here with a coming I mean, this one. Just comes down a little bit lower. Yeah, so I've got to bring this up. It's one of the good things about, yeah, even then it's probably a bit higher. Just not committing straight away. Okay, so the Dark. So we're going to redden those up. Bring some of this in. So this needs to come in a little bit more. Sometimes you almost want to. Um, not scuff it up a bit, just so it's not such a hard edge. Okay, so we are going to drop in the red. We're also going to drop in uh, a strong white, which I'll do now. Um, two inch. Just have to dry it off. Uh, okay, so uh, white, lemon yellow, maybe a bit of buff, titanium. Touch of blue, touch of green. Again, what we're looking for is a very light. That's that's a nice shade. That would go well there, but we just want to warm it up. So just some magenta. Back to lemon yellow. For something quite a bit lighter than what I've got so far. Get the blue. So essentially what I'm looking to do is just kind of block it in, but leave some of what I started with, just so it, it kind of fizzes underneath. Then we can go up here and just start to mold some of the highlights a little bit more. 
doesn't pay to hang around with blocking in just an expense. Again, just getting the yellow to work a little bit more for me. Okay. Squeezes around, touch of orange maybe. I just find when I put color in and I'm not quite satisfied, does it, does it need more red or orange or blue? And at least if I've got a line of colors, I can just, just manipulate them as I go. Just a highlight in the eye there. Just bring the highlight to the ear. Yeah, I have a feeling her eyes are just gonna go a touch larger. Um, again, it's just fighting against time. Again, just, just a gentle skim. So I leave something of what I started with. So I could find some softer tints in there. Uh, but we'll just proceed with this light first. Yeah, there's this subtle light underneath. So I'm just going to use this slightly bluer. And again, just adding some more ochre into these mixes. And just drag some of that up. Yeah, so very pale. It's one of the things with Zoom, I think it, there's, there's more color coming through. It's just you probably um, might not catch it. And yeah, there's a nice bit of light there. And we'll just skim. Some light in here. Yeah, so the way I kind of go about this kind of these kind of paintings is eventually I'll look at the measurements and just think, okay, well, I need to manipulate that. Um, obviously, with the time I'm slightly just going to try and do as much as I can. I'm babbling now, sorry. Just a little highlight there. Just trying to scoop a little bit more of that blue and lighten that. I'm slightly at an angle, so I'll kind of look in a little bit. Uh, okay, so we're going to do something with the light, then also, there's, like I say, some subtle shades. I'll also, I'll probably start with the red. So, all I need to do is get red and put it into this mix, maybe put tiny. So I'm using that primary magenta with a little bit of um, green, run it in there, and then hopefully I get, because it, it just reads to me as a slightly more magenta. So 
putting that in, just skim the top. He's got a bit dark at the corner. Just pull that up. Yeah, that goes a bit darker. And so I can drop in what will hopefully be quite a potent highlight. Uh, I'm not really strong, but just running along there. So just let that settle down. We'll use a, a bit of this with maybe a little bit of this lighter green in this color. So I can just put a little bit of tone under the eyes. And even around here. And we'll do the same here. The reason for that is I just want to establish that and then I can soften it if I, I mean, I probably will have to soften it, but just so I don't, so I don't want to do that. I don't, no dilly dallying with blending. Uh, it's all about just go for it and maybe it'd be all right. We don't know. Um, <laughs> thing is, if this goes out there, I might not show the finished portrait, uh, the finished um, or the photo. Uh, therefore it could be anyone. Um, that's the, the beauty of doing portraits. You don't normally walk around with the um, actual picture you copied from. Okay, that, again, just, just tweaking. Okay, there's also a couple of subtle bits around here. You can hardly see this tone. That's a bit better. But I'm going to use a light to just pop this. What I tend to do with demos is I'll just look at the time and I'll think, okay, well, I'll spend another, what, 10 minutes, five minutes on it. Um, and that will just speed me to the kind of finish line, if you like. Um, and I'll, I, I'll just see what's possible in the time. Just a touch of green. So I like things like that, where the base color is slightly revealed um, a little bit more. Just, just wanted that green to come through. And yeah, there's some soft shadow. Again, I've already found the color I can use just need to use it over here and again back into something a little bit more stronger just cut that along there and then so it's definitely all about this accumulation of information and then i can just enhance or leave it alone, um, just to bring it forward. So I'm going to use some light in here in a minute. Again, just looking at angles, just this definitely needs to go a bit darker, just come in. So yeah, inadvertently, I've kind of got a little bit of a mid-tone or mid-tint that I can just sharpen up these things nearly done uh so what else do i need to do right okay so where the hair is so again quite intense so just work on something less intense just for a second as i build up to the <laughs> finale um, i really like that haze of 
hair there, the way the orange, a bit like that, just, just comes through a little bit. So we'll get that orange in. Uh, going to drop some highlights in the hair as well. Over there. And again, just looking at a couple of measurements. Yeah, just wanted a softer meld. So if I worked in oils with this, I definitely have to wait for things to dry, perhaps. Um, but yeah, well, obviously not going to do that. And again, we're just looking at the big things I can change. So I know highlights going in and yeah, there's a few more little bits, just some strands there, and back to orange. I really like the diving in process at the beginning. I almost, I'd rather the drawing suffered but I don't want to lose the diving in because that is the, just the painting has energy. I've, uh, when we've been in lockdown, certainly today when I've been working, um, I listened to quite a few lectures from things like the National Gallery or um, it's an art gallery in America, I think Boston, who've got some really good lectures on, on just painting. And the one I was listening today was about paint, like what's the big deal about painting quickly? And I'm absolutely not gonna remember what they said other than the fact that anyone could do a, a painting if you like with as much time as they want, but it's the energy that's going to make the painting look a little bit more um, interesting. So it's not so much that you can do a likeness, it's just if you do it quickly, something else happens that's more to do with the way you're painting. Okay. Just, just wanted a gentle skim over here. I should. Yeah, that could come up. Yeah, so I'm definitely noticing things towards the end. Nearly done. Okay, so I don't particularly like getting a little rigor brush out and going bing bong. Um, but I don't mind highlighting other bits. So I'll probably highlight lines around the eyes, but not in the eyes, because I find that's a little bit too predictable. So um, we'll just strengthen up the light there. The, It's just it's fairly light here as well. And just over here. Probably gone to town on that light. Let's put another one around it. Yep, 
nearly there. So again, just some of these stronger, very strong tints at the end. This is the thing I like about acrylics. Uh, because they dry slightly darker, you kind of slightly underestimate, oh, right, I could go even lighter. Um, okay, so just want to add a little bit of light there. And just in here as well. Because it just gives me a bit of sparkle. Again, I've got to line these up a little bit. And we will highlight the lip a little bit. So it's just yellow, white, and a bit of sky blue. Again, okay, let's strengthen that. Forgot about the nose. Just These little finishing touches. So this is what I do with my proper paintings. And sometimes I don't always have a chance to do them in demos because they're quite time consuming and fussy. And it would make for a dull, uh, dull demo if I just spent the time doing little things. And when you put little things in, sometimes you've got to correct them, which is all also a nuisance. Um, okay, so I think we're just about there. Little highlights, just sapping through the hair. Quite a few things going on at the moment. Can't remember any. Um, but it will be on my Instagram page or my website as I've got a couple of uh, autumn shows, winter shows coming up. Um, one's in um, a group show in London at Thompson's. And yeah, okay, so just again at the end, some green, just to sharpen up. Again, just gotta be careful not to overdo this like I did the last one. It's just enough just to give me the I'll do. Right, okay, so um, there we go. Hope, um, I hope that was uh, <laughs> insightful. Um,